Alrighty, no fancy introduction. I'm just going to show you how I made this towel look a whole lot nicer. Stay tuned. Okay, so for this project, I am going to be using both the sewing machine and the embroidery machine. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to measure off a banner to put at the bottom of the towel. I'm going to stitch that onto the towel and then I'll do the second step, which will be on the embroidery machine. Now, this is just a towel that I think I paid $2 for at Target or Walmart or somewhere, and it has a band on both sides. I am going to be doing the side that doesn't have the tag at the back side because I don't want to get that all caught up. I could cut it off, but I'm just going to use this side, okay? So what I want is for my banner to be along this edge, and I wanted it to be about a, one and a half inches wide. So I got a three inch ruler and this is a Fiskars ruler. Um, probably got it at Joann's or somewhere. And I measured some cardstock. You can use paper or whatever you want to use to make your uh, pattern for your banner or your band. I keep calling it a banner, but it's just a band going across the bottom of the towel. So I measured that off. It's three inches all together, but we're going to be folding this in some points and it might not be quite one and a half inches. We'll measure it when I get it done, but I'm going to use this as the basis to do my band. I've got some fabric here and I just picked a fabric that would look okay. And I've got some matching thread that's already on my machine right now that I'll use or coordinating thread, I should say. So I'm going to just set that to the side. The main thing is whatever sides you decide your banner sh is, is going to be, you want to make sure that you have enough fabric to go across your towel. You don't want to come up short and you've got this pretty piece of material cut out and oops, your banner is, your band is a half an inch sh too short. Then you're going to have to figure something else out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my fabric here. And I am going to need an iron. And what I'll do is I'm going to put this. There's two pieces cut together because my cardstock wasn't long enough, but I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to fold it over just a little bit so that you'll have some overlap in the back there. And then I'm going to bring it over again, again, and I'm going to iron across the top of it, okay, so that I'll have some nice seams and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, I did forget to start my iron or plug the iron up, so I stopped the video for a minute so you weren't sitting there while I was waiting for the iron to heat up. But I'm just going to press, get that line there, that crease there. I'm going to fold it, try to keep that cardstock tucked right there so that it'll still be that same size that I want it. Then I'm gonna press again. So that'll give me a nice band. And I'm pretty much done with the iron for now. And so now you have a crease right here and a crease right here. I'm gonna cut past this crease because I want that crease to stay there. That's what's going to give it a nice clean look. And I also want to make sure that I'm cutting enough of the fabric so that I don't come up short. So I'm just going to start up here and cut down. It is not a straight cut, but nobody's going to know. And I'll sit that over there. So now we've got a band here. I'm going to bring the towel back over here so you'll see what I'm doing with the towel. And what I'm going to do, you can choose to cover the bottom if you could sew very neatly, 
but what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up right against here and I don't need that much hanging over. I'm actually going to clip it about right here and I'm going to tuck that under. And I want to line it up and pin it down so that it's nice and neat. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that wasn't in the camera. But I want to line it up against the edge here. And then I'm going to line it up all the way around, okay? So this is probably what takes the longest. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but just as close as you could possibly get it or to your liking. You might not want it all the way on the edge. A little hangover won't hurt anything. Okay, I'm going to pin that there. And I'm going to go all the way around. I haven't gotten this part addressed yet because I want to pin a little bit more before I actually cut anything down there. I wanna make sure that I will have enough fabric. You know, we never wanna come up short. So I'm gonna pin this here. I'm gonna pin this here. And now I'm at the end here. And I'm just going to clip just as I did with the other one and tuck it under just so that it will line up with the edge of your towel here. Okay. And try to tuck it so that it doesn't hang out on any part. You don't want any excess fabric hanging out. Okay. So I've got that pin there and I'm going to just pin this here as well. And because I'm going to be sewing the top part too, I'm going to pin that as well. You're basically going to be sewing in a box. And so if you can sew a straight line on a sewing machine, this will be an easy and nice project for you. I would imagine you could probably do this sewing by hand as well because you're just doing a straight stitch all the way around. It's of course easier with the sewing machine, but I think it could probably be done by hand if you didn't have, you know, the sewing machine option. So I'm going to pin this all the way around. And I'll, I'll put a pin right here just for safekeeping. And now that's all pinned down. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way around. And I'm going to find a thread that is as close to this mix as possible so that it's not looking too bad. And I do want to make sure it is lined up just where I want it. I'm going to need to put another pin down here because I can see that being a problem. And then I'll end up having to straighten that up. You see how that works? Nothing is perfect. And I'm just going to do this video in one take. There will be no retakes. If I mess it up, you're going to see the, the mistakes that I make. Okay. So now I'm ready to get some thread and take this to the sewing machine. Okay. So this is the Brother SC. 425 is the embroidery sewing combo. Um, I just use it for a sewing machine now because it is a computerized sewing machine and I like the flow. It, to me, it's a lot smoother than the regular mechanical uh, sewing machines that I've had. And this was the first embroidery machine that I ever got. And um, it, I used it for a few things and realized that I truly do like embroidery. And I ended up upgrading to a bigger size embroidery machine pretty quickly because I knew I needed some bigger frames and things. So since we're going to be sewing on a gray towel, the background's gray, 
I put gray thread in my bobbin, okay? So my bobbin is loaded with gray thread so that it will not be so obvious on the back of the towel. And then the top thread is gonna be green. Now, I use the same brand, Coates & Clark. Um, it's an all-purpose thread. This isn't the thread I'm using. I'm using green, but just, you know, for namesake, this is the type of thread that I'm using, and it, this is an all-purpose. This is not a embroidery thread that I'm using for the sewing part right now. So, like I said, I'm just going to basically stitch a box all the way around. And I've not recorded me sewing on the sewing machine, so I'll see how this works out. Now, just in case you want to know, I do have my my um, stitches set at 3.5 so that it's a nice straight but tight straight line. I'm going to take this first needle out so it doesn't get caught in my needle. The first pin out so it doesn't get caught in the needle. And I always start off with a back stitch that locks your stitch in place. And the green may not have been the best choice, but we're going to roll with it, okay? I try to stick with a one-fourth seam allowance when I'm sewing. It doesn't always work. take that one out because it's a little bit close and see this pulled away a little I don't know that that will come back over or not I'm gonna see if I can finagle it back This is where pinning very well is very important. But you know what? This is going in my bathroom. And I told you, you'll see this mistakes and all because I'm just going to stitch this one time. As long as it comes out decent. <laughs> decent for me anyhow. The guys in my household are not going to care if the stitch is off on the towel. They're drying their hands off on I'm going to roll this up a little bit to allow it to come along. I'm going to bring this back down this side. I think I just made the line over there. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm talking and mumbling to myself as I'm stitching, but, um, I was just inspecting as I was going along to see if I actually got everything stitched in there and there weren't any holes where the fabric would, you know, kind of purse open or pouch open. And so let's see here. There is a spot down here that 
did not get caught up in the stitches. So I'm just going to run that through. And I forgot to back stitch. That back stitch is important to make sure that you lock things in place. But um, this is just a personal towel and I'm just recording as I make it real quick because I need a different bath towel, hand, not bath towel, hand towel in my guest bathroom downstairs. So... Get that out. I think I got all the needles out. Yep. That actually does not look too bad so far. And so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to hoop this and we're going to get it on the embroidery machine so that we can stitch out a little something, something up here. Now, just a pause for a minute. If you don't have a embroidery machine to, you know, do all of your embellishments on, I didn't want you to see all that mess over there. <laughs> but if you don't have an embroidery machine to do your embellishments on, this is pretty just like this. So it's not like you have to do embroidery on everything to make things, you know, custom or personalized or just special for you. You can just stitch something on it and look at that. It just completely takes it from being a $2 Walmart or Target store hand towel, wherever I got it from. So it does, it does a great justice. And on the back side, you see, I use the gray so that so much of that green wouldn't show through. So that's how it looks on the back side so that you're not seeing all the green. There are some spots where you do see the green and I don't know if that's a tension issue with my machine or what, but it did do that over there. But you get the gist of what I'm saying as far as how this goes on. So now we're going to get this hooped and onto the embroidery machine. Alrighty, so we are going to hoop this on a 5 by 7 frame. And today I am actually going to use my older PE 770 okay because I know a lot of people only have a five by seven uh, hoop frame as far as their machines and that is what I'm going to use because that's all I need for this this is a tearaway paper type stabilizer that I'm just going to hoop onto here now to get it in place on the hoop, I always fold my towel in half so that I have the halfway point, I mean the two ends right here and a halfway point right here. Then remember these notches tell you your halfway points for your hoops. I'm gonna sit that there, bring it all the way up. Then I'm gonna open it out and I know that it's centered right there. So I'm going to pin it here. Nope. <laughs> this is what I've got to do. Because I don't want this to be stitched on. I want the stitching to go above it. So this is going to be the edge. So I'm going to fold it back up again. Find my new edge, which is right here. I'm going to bump that against that little knot so that I know that that's in the halfway spot. Now I'm where... I need to be with it because I definitely want the stitching to be up here and not down here and you guys know I like to float everything I can't say that enough but I'm sure it probably gets on some people's nerves when you have people who repeat the same thing over and over again so that's there now, I'm not going to put any more pins in it because what I need to do now is get some water-soluble stabilizer to drape over it. You always want to put water-soluble stabilizer or some type of draping, whatever you want to call it, on top of your towels or anything that the stitches could get sunk down into or that the needle can be pulled against because that will keep your threads looking nice on top of your design 
versus sinking down into your design and you won't be able to see anything. So I'm going to get my water soluble stabilizer and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my water soluble stabilizer. Now I'm going to finish pinning it all the way around. And just make sure when you're pinning, if you decide to float and not actually hoop it the way you're supposed to, if you decide to pin everything down, just be sure that you know where your stitching area is so that you're not putting your needles anywhere near or your pins anywhere near where your needle might go. You don't want your machine to be stitching and then all of a sudden it's going to hit your straight pins and then your safety device is going to be activated and don't ask me how i know about that i'm going to put one more uh, pin up here all righty so now i'm going to take this to the embroidery machine and we're going to get it stitched out Alrighty, so this is the PE770. Uh, there is a newer model out now, the PE800. And it is just a embroidery only machine by Brother. And it only has a 5x7 frame, at least that's all I have. I think there may be a smaller one, don't, don't quote me, because I only have a 5x7 hoop for that. Now, I'm going to be using this color thread. It is by coats it's a 40 weight polyester embroidery thread and then i've got 90 weight embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin so i have the towel hooped my design is already loaded now i just need to get the frame back on here and i'm sorry i can't show you what i mean on the camera but always look if you can to make sure you're getting everything clamped in place back there you know you want to just make sure that where it clamps in back there that it gets in there okay so now i am ready to run the design so it will stitch out i'm not quite sure how long this will be but i'll just let it run the stitches and I'll check back in with you. And I just realized that I do have this turned down to where it's only running at 300 stitches per, per minute uh, because some designs you definitely don't want to run fast um, so it's running at 300 right now so I'm gonna just let it go ahead and be slow and check back in Alrighty, so that was it. It is stitched up and now I just need to clean it up and it will be ready for presentation. Okay, so now I'm just going to take all the pins out. The water soluble stabilizer for the most part can be pulled away and whatever doesn't come apart, come away easily. 
um, it's water soluble. So just dab it with a Q-tip or, you know, if it's something for you, you could run it underwater if you'd like. I don't know what that string is pulling for. That happens sometimes. Okay. And then I'll show you why I like the tearaway on the back. Um, I know some people use a cutaway stabilizer, but it leaves the stabilizer on the back. So if you're using tearaway, you just pull it apart, pull it away. It literally just tears away. And whatever is up under the threads, it will eventually get washed out and it's not going to alter the way your piece looks. So I definitely like tear away with my towels. Okay, so all you see on the back is the lettering versus actually seeing a bunch of stabilizer. Some fabric from another project. And there you have it. An upgrade on a $2 towel. So if you try this, let me know. I would love to see it. I do thank you for taking the time to watch. Hit the like bell if you liked it. The like button if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more of what I have to come. And hit the notification bar if you want to see or be notified when I have new videos uploaded. Until next time, take care.